All right, in today's mini tutorial, we're gonna look at setting up a loop that will exit after a certain condition is met. This is a handy way of setting up, for instance, practice trials where you have subjects go through a series of example trials until they hit a certain level of performance, at which point you can end the loop and start your actual experiment. So let's begin by renaming our trial here, and we're gonna call this trial training. And we're also going to go ahead and create a blank interval of 500 milliseconds, which we will insert after the training. And we will insert a blank text object, which will have a duration of half a second, making it the 500 milliseconds, which, and it will display nothing. And we're gonna go ahead and insert a loop around all of this. And we're gonna call this our training trials. And this will have, um, in fact, we're going to give it 9,999 trials. Basically, it's just going to loop forever until uh, we exit. Now, in our training trial, we need to show something. So, let's start off very simply. We're going to call this our training text. And let's start with just yes or no. So, basically, on the training trial, we're just going to be asked yes or no. And we're going to include a keyboard input where we allow subjects to say either yes or no. Uh, we'll call this key training. And let's say that the correct response here is yes. So when subjects say yes, that is gonna be considered a correct response. What we need to do now is set up a condition so that we can exit these training trials when subjects have pressed yes enough. Why don't we say if subjects press yes four times in a row, we end the training trials. So in order to do this, we need to insert a code component. So you'll find it right here in the PsychoPy menu. Now when the experiment begins, we're actually going to set up a variable called total, total accuracy, and we will set that to zero. This variable is gonna count up the number of accurate responses in the training loop and when it detects that four or more accurate responses have been produced, it's going to end the training loop. So this will get initiated at the beginning of the experiment and actually let's call this our training code just to keep ourselves straight. Now on each trial, we're gonna present participants with a prompt, yes or no. They're going to press either Y or N and if they press Y, that's a correct response. So when subjects press Y, it will end the routine. And so at the end of the routine, we want to check if key training dot correct is equal to one. If subjects did make a correct response, then we want total accuracy to equal total accuracy plus one. This means that if a subject presses yes, uh, we will add one to their total accuracy and after four yeses, we'll be able to quit. Let's set up one more condition though. If subjects don't produce a correct response, let's just go ahead and reset total accuracy to zero. There's many different conditions you can set up. So you can use these if statements and checking if correct responses were made to figure out how many correct responses you want before a subject uh, ends the training trials. You could also say, for instance, if a subject makes a mistake, so an incorrect response, you could say total accuracy is equal to total accuracy minus one. Um, so you could sort of set up whatever conditions you want. We're just basically gonna have this condition where when you make a correct response, we're going to start counting the number of correct responses in a row. And if you have four or more in a row, we're gonna consider that you've now successfully been trained. So we need one more statement here. We need to check if total accuracy is greater than or equal to four, because if that's true, we wanna end the training trials. And how do we do that? Well, we access the training trials and we access a variable called finished and we simply set it to true. And that's pretty much all there is to it. So if we go ahead and save our experiment, we'll call this practice loop. And then if we go ahead and run our experiment, what we'll see is that we'll be presented with yes and no responses. Yes or no, I'm gonna say no. I'll say no, I'll say no, I'll say no. Notice I can keep saying no as much as I want and the trials will go on and on and on. I'm gonna say yes, yes, 
yes and then no and notice that I say can say yes now yes now yes it's still not ending I'm saying yes and we're out so I did four yeses in a row there I know it's hard to see what I was pressing yes or no because uh, you guys can't see what I'm actually typing but trust me at the end there I was pressing nothing but yeses and when I hit my fourth yes it actually ended the loop so you can go ahead and set up this very simple experiment to try it yourself um, to see how the practice trials work and how you can conditionally exit a loop it's very very simple um, we're going to go ahead and make this experiment just a little bit more advanced by actually loading up a stimulus sheet. So I have a stimulus sheet here with six words and a target response to each of those words. So we're going to go ahead and select our stimulus sheet. And notice that it detects that there are six words, so six conditions, um, and there are two parameters. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Those are six conditions. These are two parameters. So uh, w instead of displaying yes or no, we're actually going to display the word stim and we need to change this from constant to set every repeat so that every time this routine repeats it grabs a new uh, a new row out of the Excel file and in our keyboard uh, object, rather than hard coding the correct answer, we're going to set it to get its correct answer from the target response column of our sheet here. And so we can just say OK. And if you notice, uh, grass, hill, sky, sun, uh, I've coded those all as yeses. House and tree are no. So kind of like the ground and the sky are yeses, and objects like a house or a tree are no. I don't know why that makes sense. It's just how I coded it. But if we go in and run our practice trials now, what you'll see is we'll be presented with an item. We're supposed to say yes to the sky, yes to the hill, yes to the sun no to the tree and we exited so i did three yeses and a no and it got me out the reason that it ended once again is that we we successfully got four accurate trials in a row so playing around with these if statements you can concoct all sorts of conditions in fact let's go ahead and set up one more condition just so you guys can see how you can create more sophisticated conditional statements here so let's introduce another variable and we'll call this number of nos and we'll set this to zero and what we will do here is we will create another if statement and we will say if key training dot keys is equal to no then number of nos equals number of nos plus one now what this if statement is going to do is count up the number of times that we've said no to different items and now we'll change the ending condition to uh, having four accurate responses in a row but also having at least 10 ends so what we're doing here is we're now setting up two conditions in order to exit this loop so our loop will now continue on until we have four accurate responses in a row and we've provided 10 no responses this allows us as you can see to create more sophisticated conditions in which to end the practice trials so if we go ahead and run our experiment now, what we will see is we can say no to tree, yes to sun, no to house, yes to hill, yes to sky, yes to grass, yes to hill. Notice that these have all been accurate responses, by the way. So we're well past the four accurate responses in a row. I keep making accurate responses here. Uh, I think this is a... Oh, I've forgotten now. Yes? Yes. <laughs> So notice I'm making accurate responses, but we're not exiting yet because I need to provide a bunch of no's. So let's just actually say no to a bunch of these things. No, 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 no. Now I can start saying yes to sun, yes to grass, yes to hill, no to house, and we've exited. So I got four correct responses at the very end in a row after I had provided a bunch of no responses. And we can actually see this very clearly if we go ahead and look at my data. So what we've got here is the key are the keys that I was pressing. What we've got here are whether that was a correct response or not. And you can see I was getting lots of correct responses in a row, but I didn't have enough no responses. So I started to make a bunch of no responses. And then once I had I produced uh, four correct responses in a row, and then the experiment ended. 
So the sky's the limit, really. You can go ahead and create any number of conditions that you want. You can keep track of which keys are being pressed, whether they're correct answers. You can do all sorts of other sophisticated conditional checks here. And whenever you want the practice trials to actually end, all you need is this one line of code. So I hope this helps show you some more things that you can do with PsychoPy. And this has been a PsychoPy Quickie. Uh, good luck using this in your experiments.